Welcome to the IBS Building Products Intermediate Training Video for Plywood. IBS focuses on providing service to the New Zealand market above and beyond others. In New Zealand we have very segmented plywood manufacturing, so that means that there's a company that kind of focuses on the nursery and the trees and then there's a company that focuses on planting them and there's somebody else that focuses on pruning them and and etc. Araoku is a fully integrated company where they control the whole process from the nursery right until loading it into the containers and putting it on the ship so they don't have any ships so that's their outsource. So it starts in the nursery, trees are cultivated into different families 26 different families last time I checked, which was a couple of years ago. The, the reason that they do that is because trees will grow faster on the ridge line, on the north face, on the east, east face, south face, etc. On a hill, more northern is slightly warmer climate, more southern, slightly colder climate. So the whole idea is to get the most fibre per year out of all of those different environments so they maximize their investment and also to get the best quality product with the least amount of knots and the um, and the strongest fiber to make the strongest plywood and other products so the most common species that we use um, in New Zealand for structural plywood is Pinus radiata so this gives you a bit of an idea. So this is one of 14 sites all around Chile and this is one bay of about 12 or 13 in one of the nurseries. And this is the yearly um, cultivation for replanting. So all of that is all Pinus radiata. And that there is what a baby eucalypt tree looks like. So some of the, they call them mother plants, initiate, you know, came from New Zealand when Carter Holt and Arauku were working together. Logs are cut in the forest and transported to the mill. So we've now gone through the families and, and the nursery and why they grow the different families. So this is how they cut the forest down. So 26 years to grow. That's how long it takes to cut it. So that's grabbing it and then turning around and putting it in stacks. Uh, this technology incidentally was actually invented in New Zealand. So now they're cut down and put in stacks and then this machine comes along takes a little bit of the bark off and then it picks it up and it cuts it to certain sizes that they um, are going to use in the in the log merchandiser. So from there all the logs go into the log merchandiser. So Raoku has a timber sawmill, a plywood plant, a pulp and paper plant and a biomass energy plant on each of its sites. So the logs are taken into the log merchandiser where they scan the logs, they literally ultrasound scan them to choose which way is going to be the best use of that log. Could be for timber, plywood, 2400, 1200 which would be for the cross bands and also for pulp. So this is the scanning process All the different parts are, are, are scanned and then they're going to cut that and that could be for plywood and that could be for timber and then it gets taken off and sorted into different bays. And you can see these things are, are moving to um, get ready because they're going through this scanning process here and the computer's deciding what part of the log is, is the best. Okay so now we've Got the logs sorted out into uh, different bays for making plywood. 
The first part of that is called the prep and peel. So uh, is a debarking machine, then they're heated up to put in big steam rooms, depending on the moisture content and depending on a whole lot of factors what it's getting used for, 12 to 40 hours. And sometimes it's a soaking tank, sometimes it's a steam room, depending on the manufacturing process. For a Rauku, it's a steam room. And then it goes to the peeler lathe. The peeler lathe will rotate the logs really fast, so clamps on the ends, and then it turns and it peels off the veneer. And it spins at, a, again, a rate between 9 and 240, and it's all calculated to maximise the yield of the ribbon. And the veneers are, are peeled into different thicknesses so that they can make up the different thicknesses of ply that we need. From there, we've now got the ribbon coming off, a big kind of sheet of paper shooting down. That ribbon is then cut into 12, I think it's about 1250 wide sheets, and it's quite cool. It's like a little um, knife, and it sort of pivots like this, and it chops it into the, into the right size. And then it also it goes through a scanner, or the first scanner, to put it into different um, moisture content groups. So, for example, the outside bit of the log being peeled off might be a slightly higher moisture content than the inside bit, or the other way around. And also, they're scanned to see if there's any unacceptable defects or good A-grade sheets, so you can see where you're going to use it in the makeup of the ply. Then they're fed into the dryer which is a big 100 metre long box with conveyor belts running through it at different speeds and they go through at different speeds because they're at slightly different moisture content so it's all gauged to try and get a very low moisture content veneer at the end. Once dried, the veneer is graded again and then stacked. Some of the veneers that come off have really bad defects and so they need to be cut out and all those really bad defects go through something that's called a composing line. So basically what that is, is they cut out the defect and then they put the two nice cut edges together and they stitch that together with it's a special tape. And so you've got a nice veneer which could be used as the uh, core veneer or as the cross bands. And the whole idea is to have as less core gaps in the, in the sheet of plywood as possible. So we've cut the veneers, we've dried it, and now we're going to glue it together. This is a pre-press or a cold press. So the veneers go through a gluing process, and then they're sort of all stacked together, and they look actually quite ugly when they've, when they've gone through that first pro, uh, process of gluing and they go into the initial cold press. The timing between putting the glue on and it going into the cold press, pretty much like all steps, but this is really, really vital because if it doesn't get done at the right amount of time, that's when we get bad delams and bubbles and issues like that. So this is the starting process for the glue to be set or to go off. So this is the daylight press, not the Araku one, because the Araku one's a 48 stack high. This is about 12. When you're making panels, basically there are two ways of pressing it together. There's the daylight press, which is kind of like a big CD stack, and you stack each sheet in its own space, and those big steel plates have got steam all running through them, so they're heated up to different temperatures depending on the thickness of the ply, and then they're put together under temperature, heat, and also pressure. So big um, pistons push all that together, so that's the daylight press option. Then you've got the continuous press. So the continuous press is basically a really long um, press, where it starts out as a mat, probably about that high, depending on the thickness of the board. That would probably be a 12 mil MDF, for example, would start out about that high. And then again, under pressure and heat, it goes through the press and then it comes out the other end at the appropriate thickness. 
Um, personally, I way prefer the continuous press method because it's way more consistent and you don't have issues. But you can't make plywood on a continuous press because it just doesn't work. So the sheets are loaded where they're compressed under pressure between 110 and 200 psi and the temperature is between 110 and 157 and the reason that there's a variance again is just got to do with the thickness of the product so a 25 mil plywood would be pressured up a bit more and it would have a bit more temperature and a 7 mil plywood or a 4 mil plywood wouldn't need quite as much and again the timing is between two and seven minutes and that's just got to do with the thickness of the product. So we've glued it, we've put it in the cold press, we've put it in the daylight press and um, as we saw it was quite hot so we've now got to cool the sheets down. They're left in stacks for 24 hours to basically just cool down. The rough sheet so the, the edges are still all kind of a bit skewy and doesn't look that pretty so they go through sets of saws to trim them to the final width and the length. Again, this is another opportunity for them to go through scanners and to get sorted into different grades. And then they'll either pass through a manual repair line or in Araoku's case, this is a robot repair line, which is really cool. So these robots come out and router out bad bits and fill in with different kinds of filler. So with the plywood grading, all plywood plants in the world always try and make the highest grade possible. So they want to make only A grade face plywood. But it's not always possible to do that for a whole lot of reasons with the veneers. So the goal is to make A grade. And so this is why there's lots and lots of grading because basically they focus on making A grade and then everything comes out with a lesser grade than that from the fall down. So we've cut the sheets. Now we're going to sand it and calibrate. So there's a sanding belt on the top and the bottom and they pass through to make sure that across the whole sheet it's exactly the right thickness. On this process all the Raoku sheets are also ultrasounded. They go through and they're tested to make sure that there's no bad bits in the middle of the sheet which could cause delamination or bubbles or blows. And they're also visually graded um, after all the computer stuff. In this process they're also stamped on the back with the appropriate markings depending on the market and the grade. So the approximate moisture content for an untreated plywood out of the factory is 12 to 14 percent. So from there there's also added value products. So extra work is done after all of this is already done to the sheet. Some examples would be cladding, so you can get a band sawn, which is um, basically roughs it up like rough sawn timber, and then you can put grooves in it, like our ply clad 150, or shadow clad, or alpine cladding. You can v-groove it, w-groove it, we can treat it, we can put the phenolic film on it, and it would be a form ply. These are all added value after you've already made the product. Okay, so now we've got a video which kind of goes over all of those things that um, I just talked about. And again, this is all about the Araoku process. So it's not consistent with all of the different plywood um, manufacturers, but it's pretty consistent with the stuff that we mainly sell. Arauco, over 40 years of experience with one clear vision. Be a world reference for development of sustainable forest products. A vision that guides Arauco Ply, delivering a great quality plywood, giving the warmth of natural wood to all our customers' projects around the world. We invite you to learn about the production process of both plywood mills Arauco and Nueva Aldea. The process begins at the log yard, where a continuous watering system keeps the logs already debarked under humid conditions and avoids degradation. 
The logs are then taken to the conditioning chambers, where they are kept under hot water for 18 hours at 85 degrees Celsius, improving the wood's plasticity. Once the logs are ready, they are driven to the peeling process, where they are transformed into a long veneer ribbon. A scanning system identifies defects and clips them away. The veneer ribbon is then cut into different size sheets, depending on the requirement and sorted by moisture content. The next process is drying where the excess of water from the veneers is removed in order to get sheets with an even moisture content. The dryers are furnished with a roller system to convey the veneers through a jet box system that supplies hot air to allow a homogeneous drying process. Once the veneer sheets leave the dryer, they are visually graded and sorted in bins. The veneer bundles are then stacked in yards for at least 24 hours in order to equalize the moisture content. Some veneer stacks are then fed directly to the panel layup station, while others are sent to the composing or patching lines. The veneers going to the composers are usually the ones with dimensional problems or defects, not meeting the standard. At the composing line, they are recovered as crossband veneers, that is, plies whose grain direction runs perpendicular to that of the outer plies of a panel. The veneers are joined together with glue spots and thermal merging strings to form a continuous 4 by 8 foot sheet. Those veneers with some smaller defects are taken to the patching line, where the defects will be replaced by solid wood patches that will upgrade the veneer allowing it to be used as a face. At Nueva Aldea Mill, this process is automatically done by a defect scanning system and robots removing the defects and replacing them by patches. Once recovered, the veneers are taken to the pre-assembling or to the gluing process. In Arauco Mills, there are two types of glue application systems, a roller glue spreader and an automatic liquid extruder type. At the roller glue spreaders, pre-assembled long grain veneers are manually laid up with glued short grain veneers, according to the grade and thickness requirements. In this type of application, glue is applied on the upper and lower surface of the short grain veneer. At the automatic liquid extruder, stacks of long and short grain veneers are conveyed into the gluing cabin, where glue is applied on the upper face of each veneer sheet. The assembled panels go through a cold pressing process to allow the glue line strength development and consolidation. During this process, the adhesive is transferred to the adjacent ply. Once this process is over, the bundle will be conveyed to the hot press, where every individual panel will be fed to hot platens to allow the adhesive curing by means of pressure and heat. This process will provide the panels with high resistance excellent adherence and bonding quality for various uses. The pressed boards are watered while being unloaded and then driven to the courtyard storage before they are sent to the panel repairing line. The automatic panel repairing line is a piece of equipment furnished with a scanner that detects surface defects. The data gathered by the scanner is compared against a recipe to determine if the defects meet the specifications for that grade. If not, they will be rooted away and repaired either with water-based putty or polyurethane, both with similar color to the wood. If there are still any defects left, the panels will go through a manual panel repairing line. Once repaired, the boards are taken to the trimming line, 
where the uneven edges are removed and the final format is given. Through the sanding process, we obtain a superior surface finishing and thickness calibration of the panel, giving the final appearance to each board. The boards are then graded by face and back face grade, in accordance to customers' requirements and strict international standards. To add value to the sanded boards, there's a grooving line, where different edge or surface profiles and textures are made. The finished plywoods units are stacked and moved to the packaging and storaging area, where they are ready to be delivered as Arauco Ply products to domestic and worldwide customers. I hope that you got a better understanding of how plywood is made. Check out the advanced level plywood training video next for some more technical information. Thanks for watching our training videos and you can always get more information at www.ibs.co.nz and remember to like us on Facebook.